If you cruise all the time like I do, does that ruin going on cruises compared to what it used to be? You know, I thought about this question for a long time because one of my readers asked me this exact question because of the fact that I cruise on, let's say 10 or 12 cruises a year, does going that often ruin the experience compared to what I was used to when I would do maybe a cruise once or twice a year? And it's a tough question because there are definitely pluses and minuses to it all. I think many people who watch these YouTube videos here on our channel are always clamoring for another cruise. I often talk about, when is your next cruise coming up? Let me know about it. And people always share this excitement of, I can't believe it. So excited to finally go to Europe or Alaska or check out Oasis of the Seas or Wonder of the Seas or Odyssey of the Seas. These amazing ships, cool places. There is so much drive for a lot of people to experience it all. And that is exactly how I felt when I lived far away from cruise ships up in the Northeast, and then eventually I moved down to Florida, and then eventually Royal Caribbean blog became my full-time job, in which nowadays I cruise about a dozen times a year. And with that, I wanted to talk about does it really ruin the experience by cruising a lot? Is there such thing as too much of a good thing? Certainly, if I eat my favorite food every single day, sushi, or watch my favorite movie every single day, Terminator 2, I think I would get sick of these things and I would want to break from them in order to make it more of a special occasion. And I've talked about this before, but I certainly would never want to live on a cruise ship. That would be way too much for me. When I cruise, and I do cruise a lot, I like the fact that I have breaks in between my cruises that give me a sense of wanting to get back on board. When you get home from a cruise, you're maybe a little tired from trying to do everything. You ate a lot on board. You probably drank a lot too. And it's nice to get back to your usual routine, not because you want to go back to work or the daily you know, grind or anything like that. More that being away from it makes you want it back again. It's, you know, as they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I think this is true of cruises as well. And I found that after about a couple of weeks, whether it's two or four weeks or so, I start getting a hankering to get back on a cruise. Maybe it's the food, maybe it's the drinks, maybe it's the entertainment, maybe it's the lifestyle, but... I start missing it a lot. And the longer I go, it starts to become like, wow, I really want to get back on board, even though I am lucky enough to go on many, many times. So does cruising a lot ruin the experience? Ruining it, no, because I feel like I take enough breaks with it, but it certainly changes it. And that's an absolute truth. Before I used to cruise all the time, or certainly when I covered it with RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, I would take a cruise once a year, maybe twice a year. And I would get so excited for these cruises. I mean, the lead up to it, especially those last four to six weeks, it was just everything I thought about. I would listen to Jimmy Buffett music. I would read message board posts. I would look constantly at what's available on Royal Caribbean's website to see if there's anything I could possibly get or glean or plan because I was so excited I needed an outlet for it. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I don't have quite that level of anticipation for every single cruise coming up. I do sometimes get pretty excited for certain sailings and itineraries. Like as an example, as I'm recording this, I'm taking my first cruise to Canada and New England. And being that's the first time in this region for me, I'm really excited for that one. And when I went to Norway earlier this summer, I was way more excited for it than certainly a four night cruise to the Bahamas. I think on some level, I miss that crazy amount of excitement and the way that we'd be giddy on the day of cruising. But at the same time, it's also nice to be able to work in more cruises. And I think I'd rather cruise more than have that just like unfettered excitement leading up to the sailing. And by far, the more you get to sail, the more you get to experience. And this has opened my eyes to so many aspects of what a Royal Caribbean cruise is all about. At its core, you're going on a cruise ship, you're sailing somewhere, and there's some certain activities that are going to be quintessential on any given sailing. But when you go on a cruise once or twice a year, I feel like that you are struggling to try to work it all in. You've seen all these cool things we talk about here on our YouTube channel, and you want to experience them yourselves, whether it's a new restaurant or an activity on board or taking a nap by the pool or whatever. I feel like you trying to work it all in. It's almost like a shoving a square peg into a round hole kind of situation where you're just trying to get as much in as possible and you're willing to go from you know, dawn to dusk to try to make it all work. And that can be a little frustrating because you're going to get tired and you can't do it all. And then you kind of have to prioritize and listen, that drives you to book more cruises, but you know, you want to be able to do more. Certainly the fact that I'm able to sail as often as I do, I have less of a feeling of FOMO when I'm on a ship. When I go on a cruise ship, no matter which one it is, if I don't get to do everything, I don't have nearly as much regret 
when it comes to not being able to do everything because I know that I can go book another cruise and I'll be on another cruise later on to work it in. Now, another really good reason and thing I like about cruising all the time is I gain way more crown and anchor status. Now, I'm not here to chase status. That was never my goal. But the perks you get when you reach Diamond and Diamond Plus and now at Pinnacle where I am, it's incredible. And we're going to do a video about the Pinnacle perks and benefits and what that's all about. But I can tell you that it is just amazing game changer when you reach these top tiers, given how lucrative these tiers can be. Now, as I said, I don't recommend anybody cruise for status. You should go on a cruise because you want to go on a cruise. And the status is an added benefit. And I really believe that the added benefits you get when you get to Diamond Plus and Pinnacle, it really stands out as a way to put more icing on the cake and enhance your cruise experience because we're getting things for free, we're at a heavy discount, and it really stands out. And so that's been a really nice benefit to cruising more by getting more. Also, and I would say almost equally, if not more important, I have met so many more people by cruising all the time. When I used to go on a cruise in the beginning, I really never paid attention to most people that were going there. I'd be there with my family. We would do us time, and that was about it. But now, thanks to RoyalCarmenBlog.com, we're cruising a lot, and we meet all sorts of crew members and lots of people from around the world. I love joining you know, Facebook groups for a particular sailing or the Royal Caribbean blog roll calls for the sailings that we're going on and meeting folks and getting to know them. The online cruising community is fantastic. And I've made a lot of friends that I look forward to cruising with every single time. And it's really opened my eyes to different ways of cruising because when you meet these folks, whether it's the first time you've sailed with them or maybe you're going again for the 10th time, they sail differently than you do. And they'll mention things like, hey, you should really check out X, Y, or Z. And that's an opportunity to learn, as well as, of course, have a friendly face to chat with while on board a cruise. I've often said the only thing better than a cruise is a cruise with friends. And it very much is the case. We often do Royal Caribbean blog group cruises twice a year on given ships. And these are really fun because we get to sail with friends together. And it's like everywhere you go, there's a friendly face on board the ship. And that really makes it a different and unique experience. And that was something I never got when I just sailed once in a blue moon. In addition to all that, you also get to explore more things you probably wouldn't have done. So I talked about earlier about how the fact that I get to experience more. And what I really mean by that is not so much that I can, you know, go to the pool and the solarium and the hot tub and things like that. I'm saying there's a lot of things that Royal Caribbean offers and different activities and different offerings and amenities. You know, I remember the first time I did my first behind the scenes tour. I never would have done a behind the scenes tour when I first started cruising because I thought that was a waste of time. Like, yeah, okay, the galley kind of sounds cool, but also I want to go spend more time at the pool deck, relaxing or on shore during a shore excursion. I still do those things, but now because I cruise more often, I feel more open to doing experiences on board and trying new activities and just getting around there and seeing what's available. Royal Caribbean packs its cruise ships with so many cool things to do. Activities, pay for events, and a variety of other things that you could try. And by being on a cruise more often, I'm able to try those things. Some of these things I don't really like that much, and it's like a one and done for me, but others I've really come to enjoy quite a bit. And the nice thing is when you cruise more often, you have that time to make it work, especially when you do those you know, three and four night cruises that you're augmenting your cruise experience with. Then I really find the impetus to kind of spend more time to try to seek out those things because they're such short cruises and I've been there, done that so many times, it's nice to have an alternative option. Something that is different though about cruising and how it kind of changes your outlook is about the beach. Now, I can't speak for everybody that cruises a lot, but because I've done so many cruises and so many of them have been in the Caribbean and the Caribbean has so many beautiful beaches, I personally really could not care less about going to the beach anywhere else any other time. When we're going on family trips on land or I'm traveling for business or pleasure and we're going to a city or a town somewhere that has great beaches, whether it's Miami whether it's the Jersey Shore, whether it's somewhere in the Gulf Coast of the United States. Heck, even when we took a family trip over to California and there are great beaches over there, like really nice. But great beaches are, I hate to say it, almost a dime a dozen for me because I get to cruise all the time. And I've been to such amazing beaches like St. John in the Virgin Islands or in Cozumel's beaches. I just, you know, because they're so beautiful and I've been to so many and I'll still go to so many more beautiful beaches, it's really not a draw for me anymore. And you could say that's maybe a negative, I guess, of cruising a lot in the sense that beaches become a little less special from the sense of like, oh man, I can't wait to go to a beach. And so needless to say, if we're planning a family trip, 
I'm not spending a week somewhere at the beach because we can do that a lot on cruise ships. Now that's okay because that offers me actually a way to do other things like spending time in cities and national historical sites and doing more of that rather than like, oh man, I need to get my beach fix in, which I think is a strong draw for a lot of people who are looking for summer vacations or winter breaks for that matter. And it's nice that we don't have to worry necessarily about, oh, we need to go spend a week at the beach because we're gonna do that on a cruise ship. And lastly, the nice thing about cruising all the time is it does allow me to take advantage of any last minute deals that are out there. Last minute cruise deals are not what they used to be. And we're definitely seeing cruise pricing go up quite a bit, but occasionally there are last minute deals. And when there are some, being able to cruise a lot means I'm able to take advantage of those deals as opposed to when I cruised once a year or so, we would plan those out well in advance, but it was never really even in the cars, let alone fathomable that we would take advantage of a last minute cruise. When I cruised like once or twice a year, that was it. Like we never really like the idea of cruising again and working in another sailing, it seemed like a crazy idea. Like who would do that, right? That's how I started out when I was first cruising. And it just seemed like when we worked in like, I think our third cruise in the same year, I felt like I had like robbed a bank or broken the secret code to some, like it just was this like crazy thought, like who would do this kind of a thing? And now it's like not even a second thought I give to it, but because of the opportunity to sail a lot, I'm able to take advantage of some of those last minute deals that do exist. This also helps by the way that I do live in Florida of which there are more often deals to be found within our state. That being said, I think that the opportunity to cruise a lot is also as important as the decision to cruise a lot. And they're definitely go hand in hand with that. So does cruising a lot ruin the experience? No, I think there is though a limit. And as I said, I would not want to live on a cruise ship or cruise nonstop, but I do really appreciate cruising quite often or often enough that I can work in, you know, up to the double digits amount of cruises for the year, because then you really get a chance to enjoy every single aspect of what Royal Caribbean has to offer. Let me know in the comments below, how often do you cruise? And do you think there is such thing as too much cruising? Would you live on a cruise ship? For that matter, let me know in the comments below. While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.